Hey everybody, how's it going out there? Today we're going to talk about the Ursa Major Awards because you're running out of time! You're running out of time to vote for your nominees for 2017 furry content. Um, so what is this Ursa Major Awards? For those of you who are not familiar, I've made reference to them in a few videos in the past. Um, but the Anthropomorphic Annual Anthropomorphic Literature and Arts Award, as it's formally known, but it's short for UMA, is the Ursa Major Ursa Majors, because bears. Anyways, bear with me. Um, so these are, this is our basically our anthropomorphics. As it says here, it's sort of like the Sci-Fi's Hugo Awards, um, which is basically a community-based award. People vote on the nominees, people vote on the victors, um, and it's done basically by the community. Um, so it's like Nickelodeon's Kid Choice Awards, similar to that as well. Um, it's kind of a weird fandom where I have to say Hugo's, where I have to say Hugo's and Kids' Choice Awards in the same thing, in the same breadth, and then people, to just give people a full understanding. So basically, um, if you don't, if you don't vote, then it's all going to be up to So they're going to announce it at the Furry Down Under, um, at the Furry Down Under convention this year on May 4th to 6th. Because of that, this year they are pushing the, the closing date for nominations um, sooner. As you can see, it's open till February 15th on the left bar here. So if you see the left bar under the awards, you'll have nominations for 2015. You click on that link and it will send you to this web page. Um, they will also point you out to the recommended anthropomorphic list down here. Um, you don't have to nominate for all categories, and if you are unsure about, some, if you've forgotten some of the furry content um, that came out this year, um, hopefully you would remember what ones you played and stuff like that. Um, there's something called the recommended list, which is accumulated um, throughout the year. Um, and it tells you how to do that, but that's not important because um, the list is closed for this year. Um, but basically, they list off every single category, which you have recommended anthropomorphic motion picture, which is full-length movies. And there's a pretty good amount of them this year. Um, Guardians of the Galaxy is, uh, I think, is it, that, I think that one's a pretty strong one, a contender. But I won't go too much into details on, like, that. Um, I'm not going to cover too much about... Um, you know what the like what the contenders are and my thoughts on them this is more tutorial so recommended anthropomorphic dramatic short series so this is more like a cartoon show um that's uh regular um regularly kind of brought out like danger mouse um the new ducktales um that came out this um one Benicula, the regular show um what was the other one that was pretty popular uh little my little pony is always sort of popular it's kind of lost its popularity over time but it's still a contender. Um, what was the other one? The Amazing World of Gumball. Yeah, that was it. That was another popular one. Um, recommended anthropomorphic novel. Um, this comes into full-length written works of 40,000 words or more um, of varying different things. Now, one of the rules for this one, and this is sort of a tertiary rule, um, you cannot nominate Kyle Gold. Kyle Gold is a very prolific um, furry novel writer, and he won so many of these in a row that he found him, his presence in the awards no longer viable. So you, so even without Kyle Gold, there's 24 options here. Um, if you like reading, um, there's a bunch of books here that you can look into. Um, and hey, even if you don't have time to nominate them, you know, check them out. Um, so short fiction, ironically, there's only like 14 more of those in novels. Furry writers are busy this year. Um, 40,000 words or less. As you can see, there's a lot of these by Mary E. Lloyd. She's very prolific. <laughs> and uh, she usually runs this category pretty well. Like she's a very prolific writer. She's got about half of these recommended. Um, but she, she's, she is a vulnerable. She has lost in the past um, to other short fiction writers. So. She she's not she wasn't dominating like Kyle Gold is quite quite yet, um, but she's very talented. Um, so you know check her stuff out, check all these guys stuff out. These these ones you might be able to consume if you're really crazy and like, within time, they're shorter stories, maybe half. I don't know. There's a lot of it depends on how fast you can read. I'm not a fast reader. Anyways. Recommended anthropomorphic other literary works. These are usually collections of usually these short stories, as you can see in Dog of War up here. Like there's some that are in Dogs of War and stuff like that. 
Um, so these are all the collection ones. Furry nonfiction. I have no idea about that category. But yeah, some of my stuff is in this category. I have to I have to put a disclaimer here, like um, furry crossing the mainstreams. Um, the article I wrote about Midwest Fur Fest usurping Anthrocon's record, becoming the largest furry convention back in December. Um, R.I.P. Furry Phantom. My little poke at fun at two. I guess poke fun Z's at two. Um, this is little philosophies and stuff like that. Um, the review on the Ursa Major ones, which is one of the first ones that popped up here, but that one's sort of self-referential. <laughs> um, and Zootopia's Oscar win. There's some guys from I like, culturally effed. Steph Why did they put the freaking Stefan Molnew freaking thing in here? That's not going to win. At least I hope it doesn't. Uh, but you have like these ones are fully written stuff. You also have fully written stuff like um, these. Like most of my review stuff are are um videos um this one's a written work um so this one's got a lot of variety to it because this is like a, a shorter article that i wrote these are um these are the videos that i did you know they have some culturally f videos in here um but you also have fully written furry sort of nonfiction books like furries among us 2 by trust and howl and the fandom convention sort of bibliography i don't know if that's what you call them con conographies um, by Fred Patton here in the Furry Nation by Joe Strike. So you have you know those full fledged books too. And quite honestly, like the books, I think are particularly like those that will stand the test of time. I think that maybe like a convention iconography might stand the test of time. So you know those kind of things. I think like that. Like if any of my content were to win, I would hope it's this one. I think that one would stand the test of time more. Whereas, you know, this one's more political and sort of in the moment. Um, Zootopia's Oscar win was a pretty big moment, but, you know, they won a Nursa Major as well, so I don't know. This one's also kind of in the moment. Like, I'll always be sort of making videos, so I'll have an opportunity to win <laughs> based on a video in the future. So, you know, that's just my, my take on it. But anyways... I, my things are there if you want to nominate them. I, I can't tell you what to do. I'm not your dad. Um, recommended anthropomorphic graphic story. Um, so these are like comic books. Um, like, and that, they don't have to necessarily be comic books, but sort of like a comic in a sense that it has a story arc of, and, it, and it, it's going to have a beginning and an end to it. Um, even if it hasn't been finished fully, but just the stuff that's like, so it's sort of, more pay eight by eleven sort of style of comic, um, so sort of like your Watchmen or your Batman or your or your you know Superman, you know sort of idea. So that's what these are anthropomorphic comic strip. Now this is a bit separate. New and so it's a newspaper style. You have like one three panel sort of line, and it's sort of a weekly or a, a frequently updated thing that doesn't really have a story arc to it. It's just sort of an in the moment kind of thing. You know, people can make collections of them, but that's not the, what they were originally written and intended to be in that sort of style. So, and you so you have like Riff Gritton's House Pets, which is a popular one in that genre. Um, and a bunch of different ones here. Um, the Belfry contains links to a variety of online comics, including many furry ones. So that one, or they're saying the Belfry, so that's a site, I guess. I never even noticed that. So there's a site here, I guess, that points out to a bunch of them. Uh, you have recommended anthropomorphic magazine. Um, this is kind of a weird category because it's sort of like nonfiction. It's sort of nonfiction, but it's more like serialized content overall. Like instead of like, I guess it would be sort of like the anthology thing, the other anthropo, the quote unquote other anthropomorphic works, which covers anthologies. Um, and so that, so if you are a dog patch press friend, by the way, and I'll go over this a, a little. I guess I can I can go over this a little later, and I'll cover this again. Is that just because it's not on the list here doesn't mean you can't nominate it. For instance, like down. Um, so, for instance, if you liked a dog patch press, if you really liked a dog patch press article that was released this year, and I'm and I'm telling you this to my detriment, you can actually recommend it 
for you can actually nominate it for the recommended anthropomorphic fiction work even though none of you know none of the dog patch press content is on is in this group if you really liked one of dog patch's works and there and i hate someone's gonna yell at me for telling you this probably cross is like what are you doing you're you're sabotaging yourself but no i need to be open and honest that's what journalism's all about you you can you can you can nominate one of dog patches articles up here i'm just saying you can do it just because it's not listed here doesn't mean you can't nominate it all right that's an important thing to note here this is just recommendations so if you know something awesome that's not listed in here this is more for a guide for people who haven't really um seen the things for this year um recommend so basically flara which is edited by drawn and myself um but you know if drawn if they give the thing to drawn and that's fine uh, he helped a lot, a lot with getting Flayra back on track this year or last year. So, <clears throat> Dog Patch is pretty strong. They won, la they won last year's Ursa Major. Um, it looks like we have some writing advice um, one, and we have a FurryFandom.es, which is a, um, I think from Spain, a Spain sort of press thing. I hope he's still going for it because I notice here that the, um, the. The date range is sort of not fully in the full year, so I hope that he's continuing his passion on that. I know he makes comments in Flayra every once in a while. Um, so a recommended anthropomorphic published illustration. Now this one anyone can can do. And by the way, having all these like, unfortunately, someone it looks like somebody spammed it this year. There's a lot of like eh, pictures like by some dude named Jack. Which is just as throwaway as having being having all this stuff spammed here. This is I, I know I, I was gonna not say I was gonna put my opinion aside for this one, but these showed up pretty late in the recommendation list. Like this weren't these were not here in like December like early December. Then all of a sudden in late December someone's like, Oh my gosh, I'm gonna spam like this guy's stuff on here, even though it's not that good. I mean you can go and look at these. I'm not gonna click on these, but um um, so we have other, uh, you know, so basically you can click on all these <laughs> and I know I was like, uh, I really want, I really hope, uh, the one that I did here, um, you know, I, I, am I'm, I'm, I'm pulling for this horse because obviously I commissioned this person for this and this was tied to the article that I mentioned before about the, um, the guys winning. So I'm really vying and hoping that this one wins. But there's some tough competition in here. This one's freaking nice. You know? It's like, that. that's a tough one. Like, that one's pretty good. Um, and there, But of course, like, there's other ones, I guess. Uh, I, I don't know. Maybe, like, click on one of these to show you. Yeah, I mean, eh, that one's, like, one of his better ones that he listed here. But it's like, it's not like... I don't know. Like, this is an asterisk is my opinion here. I'm putting that aside here. Like, this published illustration to me means, like, either one of the magazines or somebody... Like, it wasn't that you published it to, like, Fur Affinity or, like... Because that's, like... You could literally have, like, the entire Fur Affinity freaking website on here and say, Ha! Ah, you know, if, you know... I think they have to be PG. But, like... To me, published means you know it's on a it's a cover for something. It's uh, it's a cover for a convention book. It's a cover for a, a written book. It's like basically somebody had to pay somebody for it and actually like modify it for a particular purpose. Um, this one, for instance, is for a cover for a article. Like that's the entire intent of me commissioning this work was to be on an article. Which is not tied to any like it's not fandom based. It's not like fan based. It's not like I personally commissioned my own character and stuff like that. So I don't know. That's just my opinion. But yeah, I mean this this is a cool category in that anyone can participate. If you if you you just if you want to just look at all these pictures here and say which one do you think is the best one, go for it. And you can do that in just a few hours. More you probably do it in less time than me rambling on about that section. Anyways, recommended anthropomorphic game. This one I have some expertise in. <sighs> And but yet, despite having so many furry things on the table this year, they still decide to stretch the term anthropomorphic to its head. Cuphead, um, fight and rage. I haven't played that one. I I tried to see what it was because I would I, like this is a cool thing here too because I like from here I can the, from this list I can go like hey these are things I can add to my library that I can stream later on in my channel. Hey, cool. Like I didn't play ukulele. 
And that was a big anthropomorphic one released this year, but it wasn't very critically um, well received, interestingly enough. Sonic Forces, Sonic Mania, Star Fox 2, um, Tooth and Tail, the Dragon Trap, Snake Pass. I haven't played that one. I didn't even re like. I don't even know what that one is. Like so, all these ones I clicked, I didn't know. I guess because I wanted to see Night in the Woods. I think that one's pretty strong. The The Legend of Zelda: Breath of the Wild. Yeah, it's a good game, but it's a game. You know what I mean? I don't. There's not much in anthropomorphization in that other than like. Well, actually, I can't say that right because the bird character, whatever his name was, God, what was his name? Cass, Cass, that's it, Cass, yes, Cass, yes, um, furry bait, Cass, furry bait, furry bait, furry bait, mm, anyways, um, so I recommend an anthropomorphic website, I'm interested, interestingly, fur affinity is not listed here, which by the way, as I, as I mentioned before, if you don't see a website that you really like, there's not a lot of options here, like, maybe you don't like e621.net or the Furry Writers Guild or the Cross Time Cafe, which I've actually never heard of. I've heard of the last two. Um, but, um, but you know, you don't have all this, you know, like, if you like a furry website that you use and it's not listed here, feel free to add it to the thing. Furry Network. Um, so Furry. Um... Ink Bunny, you know, any any anthropomorphic website that you use and you like that isn't like news based, like because Flayra enough that we we consider Flayra and stuff magazines more than websites. Um, I guess that's I don't know where they draw that line, but you know, it says including story archives and personal sites, so you know you can do that. Um, there's no recommendation for miscellaneous this year. Also note that their fursuit is also not a category this year, despite this website being that. Despite this website not being updated, it was noted to me by Fred Patton and all that 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 is not a um, that's not that's not going to be a, in consideration this year because they didn't have enough interest in it. So don't worry about the furry fursuit category because it's not going to be a thing. So, anyways, the next thing you do is you go to so when you're ready and you've and you've looked at all the nominations and categories, um, you can go to your nominations page and you click the enroll for nomination button. Um, this will thing you sent you get an enrollment key by putting in your email address here, and it'll go to your email. So basically, enter this in and do that, um, and you can do that, and it'll go to that. And I'm gonna, I'll put in that information, and um, I'm going to change this thing for a second, so that I can have some privacy. And we enter that. You click that button. You go to your email. The email will have um, a link that you can click. Or you can enter the code in the key option, but when you if you're reading the email, you might as well just click the click the thing, you know. All right. All right. So after you do that, and you click on that, and you click on and you click on the link to go to it. The next thing you do is you go back, and uh, actually you you won't be on this. I just had to start on this page because. Otherwise, OBS wouldn't recognize it. Um, I'm not going to scroll up here, but because it has my personal email account um, visible. But you would enter in your name, your actual legal name, and your country of origin, um, and if you want to, your street address if you want to. But that's like the only two mandatory fields are your legal name and your um, thing. So I'm not going to show you that part. But basically, here. Is where you would enter your thing. So I can say Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. I wouldn't worry about spelling too much. Um, just as long as you... <laughs> I'll, I'll spell Guardians correctly though. I'm a writer, dang it! Anyways, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. They'll understand what it means. I haven't really seen any of the other motion pictures. But that one was pretty good. Like, it was a freaking good movie. And I would agree with many people. I've watched people credit, you know, critics after watching the movie. And I would agree with them that it, it does have some good feels. I didn't even see Volume 1. And that ending was like, oh. Oh, that's so good. Anyway. 
Um, so I don't have enough experience in dramatic short series and work, so I can avoid this thing. I can say, well, I don't, I haven't read any novels, short fiction, nonfiction work. Um, I could nominate myself, but I'm not, <laughs> I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna look at the other stuff. I'll nominate other people on that, um, and I'll even look at some that were not um, done on that. Like I think the, um, that first cover of the Sovereign, like, oh. A good one, a very good one, um, and I'm going to nominate that one. Um, Boozy Badger's coverage of um, Sovereign Citizens. That one was a good article um, because, for one, the person was not a furry when they wrote it, but he was talking about furry content, and two, it made a furry. So, yes, I'm certainly going to nominate that one. And how, like, I should have. He's like, someone should have added that to the recommended anthropomorphic list. You know what I mean? So, that one's a good one, and. Once again, I'm shooting myself in the foot because, like, it's going to be competing against my own works, right? But as somebody who consumes nonfiction works, I kind of have, like, a, oh, that one's a good one. So, yes, like, for instance, I can say Boozy Badger. I'll, put, I'll, I'll try to find the actual one. So I'm not going to do this on camera, like, Sovereign Citizen. So this one is not one that's on the list, but I can put it in here because it's a nomination, the nominations, basically, they're going to find the best five of the ones you put in there, and they're going to select them, and they're, they're going to be the five nominations. Um, so basically, they, they tally up the thing. Obviously, this isn't the name of the article. Um, the best thing I could probably do is find the article um, and probably put like the link here. Like I can put the link and then like put the link there just to help them out in case they're not aware of it um, because they might not even know what it is. Like, I'm sure they know who what the booze. Like, basically, it was Boozy Badger's entry into the fandom. It was that one. Um, there was a lot of coverage on that topic. My coverage on it, um, Dog Patch's coverage on it, et cetera, et cetera. But that was that one. I think was an interesting, like, third party one that was like very interesting and very snarky, and I liked it. And I think a lot of people liked it, and that's why like Boozy became so somewhat of a thing because people were you know, in bad straits, and then all of a sudden people were sort of laughing at how ridiculous the situation is. And that furries tend to do that, right? We tend to find, we, we tend to grasp toward people who poke, who to can kind of give us a good view as to how ridiculous it was kind of all was, um, in spite of people taking themselves super seriously in those kind of moments. And, and so I'm, I'm certainly going to nominate that one, uh, along with like, the, the three novels and stuff like that, but I won't waste your time. Obviously, I'd fill out the four. I could fill out four of five. I could fill out five of five, which I might do in that category because I'm an expert enough in it. Um, so basically, don't feel feel free to like if you're an expert in a particular field in, in furry fandom, you know, feel free to like if you like reading, you know, these 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 ones are going to be your bag. Um, if you like motion pictures, this one's going to be your bag. Nonfiction, this one will be your bag. So this one's the one I'm going to fill out to the fullest. Um, one of the coolest ones, I think, is this one because anybody can fill it out fully, right? And then um, game, I can fill out fully. And then website, you can nominate five of them. And there's probably five of them. So, like, the ones that I think a lot of people are going to be able to do is websites because a lot of fur, any for every fur uses some websites of some description. So, you know, fill that one out. Um, published illustrations, easy enough to figure out, like, look at an illustration really quick and give your best assessment of it. Write down the five ones you think best. Look at the an recommended anthropomorphic list. Um, you know, and, you know, or I guess if you want to, you can look at any, like, the best furry art you thought of the year and just put it in here. Um, and if it quali it's qualified, I don't know what's qualified for published. I personally think it should be published in some degree, not just on fur affinity, but I don't know what their, their actual rules are. And the fact that somebody had spammed all those deviant art pictures on the thing makes me kind of had a big old question mark in my head i thought the illustration had to be published but what do i know it's their it's their party um you know if your comic strips etc game website and as soon as you're done filling out all this you hit this button you submit the information and your stuff is if you don't if you started this and you decided well i'm not actually interested in doing this you can always delete but also finally um if you wish to contribute because they do give actual placards out to actual people, so getting all that information and going, where, it's like, Zootopia, where do I send that one to? Disney. Uh, but who in Disney, you know, or, you know, who do I send all these awards out to? And they have to ship them, and, you know, the shipping costs and all that stuff. 
It costs some money to keep, maintain the website, to maintain this thing. So if you wish to contribute to the Ursa Majors Awards, um, you can offer your mon monetary um, donations here at the bottom. Um, but also, I think another big one that they're looking for, and I've heard, is that they are looking for volunteers, um, people who can maintain the site, people who can do these things or help out in any way, shape, or form um, along with the logistics of the thing because the people who created this thing are getting older. And like some of the founders of this, the founder, I believe, was Fred Patton, who founded this award back in 2001. You know, he's getting up there in age, and, you know, these volunteers have to help him out more and more um, to maintain things. Um, and, you know, maintaining this website, for instance, like in the nomination, um, or, oops, don't move up too far. <laughs> um, yeah, so basically down here is up, up here at the very tippy top. I'm not going to scroll up too far because then you know my email address um, is, has all your information and stuff like that, and that's where you would enter it. Um, so you got to fill that out and then fill this out and then click the submit button. Um, but anyways, I've basically covered everything in not too quick a fashion, but I think that it, everything here was worth covering. So make your voice be heard. You have four days to kind of think about the things that you really like to see in the fandom and really, you know, go back to, you know, if you really liked one of my videos that wasn't on the nomination list, go ahead and, you know, submit your if you really liked it, go ahead and submit it in the nonfiction work. If you really like one, as I said, if you really like something Dogpatch did, like I could put Dogpatch Press and then whatever freaking article I want to put in here, I could do things like that. Um, you know, it's your it's your fandom. You need to like if you want if you really want to promote good works in your fandom, like this is an opportunity for you to do so. This is an opportunity for you to have a voice and to do so. So. We're gonna we're gonna stop that there. We're gonna we're gonna call that a video. So thank you very much for watching. Um, kick that like, kick the subscribe button, kick a comment in the comment section. Um, I'll probably do a written form of this, um, which will probably be more consumable because, quite honestly, a written form of something like this would probably be very useful. And I'll probably put that on. I'm trying to get better at doing flavor stuff at least once a week. Um, articles have been kind of slow, and like I need to get stimulus in there even despite me having to freaking have my personal crap come up and all this stuff but this has got me kind of pumped you know ursa majors and having some of my stuff on the recommended list certainly very much helps my morale and i thank you thank you whoever did put them on the recommended lists i am very grateful for even getting that far um and it has shown me that this may be my niche in the fandom is doing nonfiction works and that I should continue to expand and look upon that particular aspect of the fandom as sort of my niche. I have my cutie mark, as it were, um, and thank you very much for that. Um, and thank you very much for all the subscribers. We're reach approaching the 300 mark, and um, I hope to continue providing you good information throughout this year as well, um, even if it is against my best interest. Like, for instance, nominating Boozy Badger's article about the sovereign citizen thing uh, certainly hurts me because it, it's going to be competing against my stuff. But yes, um, you know, but that's not my job. My job is not to help myself. It's to help, you know, the furry fandom. Um, but thank you very much for watching. Um, and I hope to see you again next week. Kick a like, kick a subscribe button, kick a comment in the comment section. Have a good, have a good rest of your week.